Don't know why. Oh, all right, Wheezy, does it say recording on your end? It does. Perfect. Perfect, perfect. I'm going to go ahead and move the chat over here so I can see my notes. All right, you good to go? <clears throat> good to go. All right, everybody, welcome back to the podcast and welcome back to part three of our section, hi section hiking prep series. And Maria Wishart, and you guys know her as Wheezy P, is back with me for part three. So welcome back to the show, Wheezy P. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> again, I'm going to go ahead and say it again. That is the best part of the show. When Wheezy P says, hey, that is an indication to me that we are ready to go. And we are back with our live chat this week. We've got several people in the chat. They are pumped and ready to go and get started on this episode. So we will go ahead and kick this off. Today, we are talking about clothes, food, and Wheezy P's favorite thing on the trail, her electronics. So I know she's going to be excited to get that to that part of the show. So let's go ahead and kick this off with clothes. Now, in the last two episodes, um, there were some things that were not, you know, it was not a boots versus trail runners um, chat and situation. It was not, you should do this. It was not, you should do that. It was a lot of considerations and things to think about. And we're all, we're going to continue with that trend on this episode when it comes to clothes because honestly, clothes are another personal item for everybody. They really depend on the time of year you're hiking, your weather, and your personal preference. But I will say the number one thing that you need to look at and consider with your clothing when you are out day hiking, section hiking, through hiking, overnighting, is not wearing any cotton. Cotton is not your friend. It does not dry well. It absorbs water. Yeah. And I'm talking from head to toe cotton, especially your socks. But uh, Weezy P is going to kick us off with uh, her clothes situation. And I call this section of the, oh, I forgot. Let me go back real quick. Make sure you guys go to hikingradionetwork.com. Today's lesson plan or reference tool is in the show notes. And that is what we are following for each one of these episodes and getting back to our clothes. All right, Wheezy P, break down your clothes that you wear during the day and kind of what you like. Okay, so I have gone with merino wool on some occasions and I've also gone synthetic. I like lighter weight clothes. They dry nice and fast. And I, I like to go in warmer weather on overnights. Um, they also have uh, DWR coated shorts, which are great. So what I personally wear is the running brands. I like the running shorts and running tanks. Um, like I said before, the knee high socks. In winter, I actually um, like a base layer legging or um, or any kind of legging that's going to keep me warm. So like a fleece line legging. And sometimes around here in the Duncannon area, it gets very, very windy in the winter. So I also have a pair of uh, wind pants that are also DWR coated. And those are great for cold weather. You put those on, you layer fleece layer or a merino wool base layer underneath, and that's going to keep you nice and, and toasty. Um, I don't really bring a lot of stuff with me, but when I hike in the winter, I make sure I have a complete another set of clothing in my backpack if I go on a longer hike because worse can happen you want to be prepared so um, a really great site is the running warehouse site for your your running clothes also I should mention gaiters uh, the dirty girl gaiters are very popular and those are just going to keep the debris out and then you have your waterproof gaiters and that's really personal preference some people wear them. Some people don't. I can't remember if Chester wears gaiters or not. <laughs> I do not. They, my, my feet, I tried gaiters before, but I'm telling you guys right now, there's something happening in the summer with my, I get heat rash. So I have to wear low cut socks. I can't have gaiters on. I wish I could because they do very, very well with keeping the debris out of your shoes. And I know a lot of people love them. They are just a deterrent for me in the summer. Um, I have worn them in the winter, but I don't do a ton of winter hiking. So with that being said, I think Weezy P and I agree 
that uh, your clothes should be some type of wicking material. And Wheezy P <laughs> loves the running clothes. And my kind of clothes during the day, um, what I have found that works best, and it took me, when I say years, to find an outfit or a clothing brand that I really, really like. It took me years. That's what, would you guys see my pictures? It appears I'm in the same outfit for several years. And that is true. I do buy the same outfit. I mean, I buy a couple of each every uh, year for the summer season. And I love the women's uh, Columbia wicking uh, performance fishing gear shirt. I love that shirt. I mean, it buttons down. It is very, very, very light. And in the summer, you could take that thing off. You can dip it in the creek. You put it back on. It's very cooling. And I also have the winter version of that shirt that keeps me very, very, very warm. And I would say very warm, even in temperatures, you know, in the mid 20s to mid 30s. I don't even have to wear an underlayer under that um, winter um, uh Columbia, I forgot the name of it, Columbia Performance Fishing Gear shirt. And I'm very, very, very particular about my shorts. And Wheezy P laughs at me because I do wear men's shorts. They are a brand. It's K-U-H-L. I don't know if you say it with cool because I have no idea why in the world women's manufacturer of hiking shorts do not have large pockets. I... I don't know. So I have to wear men's shorts because I've, I've got stuff in my pockets. I've got like stuff that I carry every day from my map to a pocket knife, to my headphones, to I'll even put snacks in my pocket. I like the side pocket in men's shorts because a lot of men's hiking shorts has a side pocket for your phone. And I absolutely love that. So I think that's probably where we differ. Uh, Jennifer says she totally agrees about the pockets. Women's pants that's can't even, <laughs> they can't even... I don't know why they have these things on women's pants called finger pockets. I mean, let's just not even go there. I mean, it's ridiculous. I mean, what can you fit in a pocket besides, you know, maybe, maybe in women's, maybe a small pocket knife um, would fit in a women's finger pocket, but I've had to resort to men's shorts and that's kind of what I do. And I like the cool brand because for all you women out there, you can buy a shorter length. Um, a lot of their shorts come in four inch, five inch, eight inch, and then longer for the men, of course. But that is the only brand I have found where you don't have to buy. A lot of women don't like to wear a nine inch or an 11 inch short because it comes down past your knees because they are men's shorts. So there's my beef with the shorts uh, <laughs> during the day. I mean, most of my hiking, I will say, is probably in the spring through the summer months in the fall and a shirt, a pair of shorts. Um, I do wear the Njinji socks, a hat, and that's about it. So, and as far as clothes at night, Wheezy P mentioned one very, very, very important thing is to have a dry layer of something if you are overnighting to always keep a layer of clothing dry. So Wheezy, do you want to go over um, why that's important to have that at night? Sure. Um, when you're cold, which I've made that mistake when we first started backpacking, we actually went to bed in wet clothes and your body stays colder that way. So you want to have something in your pack, nice and secure in a waterproof stuff sack or however you're going to store it, a nice warm base layer and a nice warm pair of socks. I'm uh, preferential to the Merino wool base layers because they can, Merino can still keep you warm, even if it's damp. Um, Synthetic is okay. You got the Patagonia Capilene. Those are pretty good. You also now have these blends of Merino wool and synthetic. Uh, Capilene Air, uh, Stoic makes it and Black Diamond make them. And then you, you want to have your Puffy, which Jester is going to get a little bit more into. Um, but that's going to be your system for at night. And another thing for nighttime, depending on the time of year you go, um, bring a beanie because keeping your head warm while you're sleeping is incredibly important, especially now that a lot of people are wearing, uh, using quilts. Um, so you don't have that mummy to pull hood to pull up over your head. So the beanie is important and a nice pair of, I like to bring a pair of wool socks with me, or you can bring slipper socks or cabin socks, just something that's really going to keep your feet warm because those extremities are going to lose heat. Um, 
my favorite brand is smart wool. I absolutely love my smart wool. Very, very comfortable. They fit well, but there's plenty of brands out there to choose from. There's some, um, some brands on Amazon that are a little less expensive, like Mary wool and woolly. There's a ton to choose from now and a ton of different designs too. If you want funky base layers as well. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, alpha gal says his pants have this weird little side pocket. He keeps his GPS in. So there you go. Even men's pants get weird. I don't know. I, maybe I need to design a pair of, you know, overall hiking shorts that are universal for men and women that have deep pockets. So anyway, with that being said, so moving on, Wheezy P mentioned um, you also want to have. Now, when I mention these items, it does depend on the weather, time of year, but even in the summer, and I think I talked about this either the last episode or the episode before, if I am overnighting, I will always bring my puffy jacket and probably have some type of wind shell. Um, the best wind shell I have found is, and you can find all kinds of wind shells. And this thing is unbelievable. Even this past weekend when I was out hiking on the coast of the Outer Banks, I mean, we're talking 30, 40 mile an hour winds. This wind shell kept me warm. It's a Patagonia Houdini. It's like $99. I got that thing like four or five years ago. It balls up into, it'll go into a uh, finger pocket on women's pants. <laughs> 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 That's how small it will get. But I always, no matter what season, I always have a wind shell on because even in the mountains, you're up 6,000 feet. You know, if you're on the West coast, you're up 10,000, 14,000 feet. When you stop to eat lunch or you stop and chat, you can get chilly real, real easy. So I always have the wind shell, wind shell in the puffy jacket specifically at night. Cause I don't know what happens to me at night. It could be 90 degrees outside all day long. And at night I will get chilly. And I did add a fleece to this. I am not particular, particularly a fleece person that will carry an extra fleece, but it's sometimes instead of a puffy jacket, people will carry a fleece. So those two I recommend are basically interchangeable. And Alpha Gal says his puffy is gold. So he agrees with us on that. So there are the three items that you really want to consider, depending on if you're out for a, either, even if you're going out for a long day hike, I would always take at least a shell and the following items that I'm going to talk about. And I know Weezy P and I differ on this, and we've had long conversations about this. I always, always, always have my rain gear. I have a rain jacket and I have rain pants, day hike section hike, you know, wherever I'm going, I always have that gear because I don't care if it's the middle of summer. If you're up 6,000, 10,000, 12,000 feet and it starts raining, you can get cold really, really, really quick. And I use a simple rain gear setup. It works for me. I have the Marmot precip jacket and the Marmot precip rain pants. And I'm not kidding when I tell you guys this, I have had the same pair of rain pants for about 10 years. So that's how long, I mean, that's how long they last. The Marmot Precip jacket will last you the layering on it. Um, well, let's get real. No rain jacket is really, really, really waterproof. I mean, if it's pouring down the rain on you, you're probably going to get wetted out. But a Precip jacket will last me about two hiking seasons, which is about two years. So, um, Wheezy, do you want to touch a little bit on your rain gear? And may have you changed your mind? Sure. <laughs> So I have had several different rain jackets. I still have several different rain jackets for different applications. So I have a Gore-Tex jacket made by Marmot, which you're right. They absolutely last quite a while. I think my Marmot minimalist jacket is seven years old and it's Gore-Tex. And that's the jacket that I want to bring with me when it's cold and raining because Gore-Tex is going to keep you the driest out of anything that's out there, but it's too hot to hike in, in the warmer weather. So then I have one that's made by Arcteryx and I can't remember which one they have so many beta, zeta, whatever. <laughs> so <laughs> it's one of the Gore-Tex, it's one of the Arcteryx jackets and it's made of Gore-Tex pack light, which is great because it still has the ability to keep you dry like Gore-Tex, except it's lighter. So like my Marmot, cause here I go with the weight, my Marmot jacket weighs about 14 <laughs> ounces. My Arcteryx jacket weighs about eight ounces. And then I have a Montbell Versalite jacket, which weighs under six ounces, but 
I would have to say you have to be careful with the ultralight options because I've had a couple different ultralight jackets. And while they're good in, they're great because they save you pack weight and they're great because, you know, in a short rainstorm, but if you're going to be out there all day, they are going to wet through like that. If it's a, if it's a downpour, you're definitely getting wet very, very quickly. And if you're going to use the pockets on the jacket to maybe put your cell phone in, you don't want your cell phone getting wet. So my personal favorite is my Arcteryx jacket. I wish I knew which one it was, but um, the Gore-Tex pack light, because it doesn't overheat you. It keeps you really dry and it's that good medium middle of the road to keep you um, with the weight wise. I don't wear rain pants though. That's something that I don't do. Um, I wear the running shorts, so they dry really fast. Um, I think in Georgia this past year, I kind of wish I had rain pants, but I still didn't <laughs> add them to my pack. So I haven't convinced I her to carry pants. her rain pants yet, but no, I, I might no. get there before it's over with. But uh, Stella says um, a good dog will keep you warm. And Lisa yes. agrees that a good dog will keep you warm. And uh, Kendra says that she brings her rain and wind shell on every hike. Yes, uh, Kendra. And Alpha Gal says he borrowed someone's dog once. <laughs> I have been oh, on hikes the- in, the, in the night and I wish I would have had a dog in there with me. I'm not kidding. <laughs> I wanted to just mention on the, the wind shell, I use a men's uh, wind shirt. It's made by Mont Bell. It weighs under two ounces. I've had that thing for probably four years now. And it is amazing. Like I've actually brought that in place of a base layer shirt, like in the summer, because it's just, it's just amazing. It packs down to nothing. It blocks the wind like you wouldn't believe. And it's, it's a great shirt. Mont Bell makes really great products. And they're kind of overlooked a lot of times by hikers because they're not really sold on REI or backcountry or any of your outfitter sites. You, you have to buy them direct through them, but they have really good prices and really good products. So Skunk Ape says, I don't even use rain gear anymore. I just get a free shower from the rain. Okay. You're, you're more than I am skunk. I got to have my rain gear. I don't trust. <laughs> I As do a monkey not. poo always says it's free shower day. <laughs> So, I mean, and that's, you can certainly, certainly do that in the um, heat of the summer months, but I've been caught out in the heat at night where it rains and I got cold, so I don't trust it. So I carry it. And a lot of this stuff that we're going over from your clothes during the day to your clothes at night, to your rain gear, to your socks. The reason I wanted to go over this and Wheezy P and all of you and us have a conversation about this is these are the basics. Um, these are typically what most hikers are going to carry, whether you are on a day hike or you are overnighting. And when I say clothes during the day, that's it. I have that same outfit on day after day after day. I don't carry two and three separate outfits, um, to wear during the day because you're just getting your clothes dirty and all you're doing is carrying dirty clothes. And I have that one outfit at night, a full complete outfit at night that I actually pack and keep with my sleeping bag in a dry bag. So I know 100%, no matter what happens, I have that dry outfit at night. And really that's where we're kind of going with this stuff. Um, Always think about safety, always think about getting warm. And so I was going to have Wheezy P go over extra clothes, but I'm not sure you carry a ton of extra clothes. Well, you, I mean, you used to, but I'm not sure. (laughs) Well, I don't know. Should I tell the trail name story? (laughs) (laughs) Wheezy P used to carry an outfit for like every day. I used to, I don't anymore, but (laughs) okay. So, um, carry one extra complete outfit. Cause my, my fear is what if I get caught on a branch or climbing over a down tree and I rip my shorts, then what do I do? So also trail, short trail name story. The reason I am Wheezy P. Yes. Jennifer says, tell the trail name story. So here we go. (laughs) <laughs> so we took a friend of ours to do a shakedown because he was going to do a through hike and we took him to the roller coaster because that was our next section. And I decided that I was going to try to lighten my pack load. It was only a quick overnight. So why bring an extra change of clothes? And I peed my pants in the parking lot when we got there <laughs> and I did not have an extra outfit. So before we even left the parking lot, he turns and says to me, you're not Wheezy the turtle anymore. You're Wheezy P. 
and it stuck and that's why I'm ZP. <laughs> so now I learned my lesson. <laughs> yes, I learned my lesson. And yes, I carry an extra set, a complete extra set of clothes in my pack just in case or if it rains one day and I get drenched. Um, sometimes like Jester was saying, if it's a really hot day in the summer, I might not put my rain jacket on. I might just say, screw it and, and get wet. <laughs> and then I'll hang my clothes off my pack the next day and, and change. Um, there are a couple of times I went swimming in waterfalls. So I ended up just like, you know, hanging my wet clothes off my pack and then putting the dry clothes on the next day. And I am guilty if it's really hot. I am guilty of not changing before I go to bed and just go to bed in the clothes I'm wearing and forget it. Well, now I'll that is common. Roll yes, out of bed. I will say. Yes. <laughs> so there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Like tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> the introduction of Wheezy P. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, Wheezy, if you were a real hiker, you'd all you'd have had to do was flip your shorts inside out and keep it moving, right? <laughs> I just kept moving. Anyway. He's looking at me like I'm nuts. So anyway, guys, so getting back uh, with the clothes, um, we're going to move on to another wonderful topic, which is underwear and sports bra. So that is very, so guys, just close your ears for a minute uh, when, when it comes to the sports bra. So if, uh, and I know some people, they don't wear underwear. Uh, Jester uh, wears underwear and I wear the ex officio uh, women's briefs or whatever they are. And the thing with underwear is, and you have to talk about it because I've actually hiked with some people. I mean, they're out there in their cotton underwear and they're getting all kinds of chafed and all kinds of stuff. You do not, not, not want to have on cotton underwear. And um, as far as a sports bra goes, I know Wheezy, I have not, I wear, it's called a uh, moving comfort, moving comfort sports bra by Brooks and it has adjustable straps and you don't have to pull it over your head, which is like a huge deal. It actually buckles like a regular women's bra. You don't have to pull the sweaty thing off at night and put it all wet back on in the morning. And I know Wheezy P has a favorite sports bra too. So do you want to tell us about, do you remember what that was or do you still wear it? <laughs> I do. As I said, I love smart wool. So I use the smart wool seamless racer back bra. One thing I did notice is that, um, I used to wear North face synthetic bras and the, I really wanted a Merino sports bra, but what I did notice was that every, I tried every single brand that's on the market and they run very small. So that's something to consider for us ladies that the Merino, for some reason, they just run really, really small. But um, smart wool, it's super comfortable. It dries really fast. You don't even notice you're wearing it. Um, as far as undies, I, what I used to do was cut the liners out of shorts. And then I would wear men's merino wool boxer shorts underneath it because it prevents chafing. Um, this year, I switched to Rabbit brand. Um, all my, my clothes are the Rabbit brand, um, which you can get through their website or running warehouse. And they have a built-in liner that ventilates really well. So that's what I'm doing now. And I wanted to mention for the men out there that swim trunks, I've known a lot of guys to wear swim trunks on the trail because they have the mesh liner and because they dry really fast. So us ladies can do the same thing because there's board shorts out there with built-in liners. Or if you want to, you can always wear, you know, men's pair of men's swim trunks. I mean, if you get wet, they'll dry really fast. That's right. Hey, we're wearing men's shorts, so you got to do what you got to do. And I do yep. want to say for the men out there that Skunk Ape did put in the chat. I'm going to spell this for you because I don't know if I'm going to say it right. It's Terra Mar Mesh Boxers. T-E-R-R-A-M-A-R -R -R Mesh Boxers. I have not heard of those, but I'm going to look them up because you never know. And uh, okay, so Skunk says I'm correct on that. And Lisa says that she's been trying a Merino wool bra as well, and she loves it. So the big thing for me with the sports bra was I just did, I had to find a clasp so I could take it off like a regular bra instead of pulling that thing off and on over my head. It was, that was a nightmare. So I got that problem solved. I'm not 100% happy with it, but it's good for now. So thank you, Skunk, for the mail recommendations and Wheezy P, your, uh, swim trunks recommendations. I have seen a lot of people out hiking in swim trunks. And just a couple other things I wanted to mention before we move on to food is treating your clothes with permethrin or permethrin, which is um, a spray that you can get. And I put a link to that spray in the um, lesson plan or the reference tool. 
And I used to do this. I used to spray my clothes because I was deathly afraid of, of a tick. And I don't do it anymore, but I know a lot of people are a proponent of that. And I think that permethrin spray is good for six washes of your clothing and then you have to spray again. And what happened with me is, is I would spray my clothes before I went out for the summer and then I never sprayed them again. So I got six washes out of that. But if you're only going out for a week, it's a really, really good thing to do. I also mentioned on here bug spray. I know a lot of people are anti-DEET, um, but sometimes uh, uh, DEET is the only thing that works, especially um, on the West Coast. I found on the Wonderland Trail, uh, a friend of mine had some all-natural spray, and that didn't do anything. We had to put the 100% DEET on and also up in the 100-mile wilderness. You could also buy clothes with SPF already built into the clothing. I know my women's Columbia PFG uh, performance shirt and the shorts already have SPF in the clothing. You may want to consider, I always bring sunglasses. I know Wheezy P um, doesn't uh, necessarily bring sunglasses all the time. I always wear a hat. I always have a bandana. Um, for you women out there, and what do I know? Maybe a men, you guys want to use a Kula cloth as well. <laughs> So look this up if you have not heard of it. It is a Kula cloth, K-U-L-A dot com. Basically, there's no other way to say it. It is a women's pee rag and it is the most wonderful invention it's ever. Amazing. So I do recommend that. And Wheezy P, before we get to clothes or before we get to food, uh, we have one question. Before you head to food, do you guys have any thoughts about gloves? Yes, I always bring gloves. That is, Alonda, thank you for bringing that up. I'm actually going to add that. Wheezy P, thoughts about gloves? I use them in the winter. I don't bring them in the summer. Um, I have brought them in like early spring hiking. Uh, there's a smart wool makes like a glove liner. They're really lightweight and they're just enough to keep your fingers warm while you're breaking down your tent in the morning, if you're hiking in the weather, I, I love hiking in early spring. And a lot of times you get up in the morning, it's like in the forties and you just want to keep your digits warm while you, while you're breaking down. Um, that's I, about it. I do use sunglasses though. I use the gooder brand sunglasses, but I don't use a hat. Gotcha. And I will do want to say for those that are not, uh, for those that are listening on the podcast and can't see us on zoom, I do want Wheezy Pete, hold your shirt up there. I'm a very strong proponent of where your hand is, where your shirt goes up over your hand. Oh yeah, um, I don't know if people can see that now. There are shirts now that are made, especially long sleeves and they got, I call it a half glove and they got a finger or a thumb pocket. And those are wonderful if for some reason, thumb holes, I call it a thumb pocket. Yeah, Thank thumb you, holes. Alpha Gal. <laughs> it is a thumb hole, not a thumb pocket. Um, but I am a proponent of gloves. And I always have a very, very, very thin pair of running gloves in my day pack. Or if I'm overnighting in my regular backpack, they are a very, I got them at a running store and they're very, very thin. And I could not find them anywhere else but a running store. So it seems a, a lot of things we get are from the running store because uh, runners want very, very thin, lightweight, functional things. So, all right, I guess it is time now we move. Oh, wait, I forgot about toilet paper at a trowel. I don't know why I added this to the clothing, but I wanted to make sure that we covered this for not only for day hikes and section hikes. I always carry and it for some reason it ends up in my clothing bag toilet paper and a trowel and Wheezy P tell us what kind of trowel you got. I have a deuce of spades trowel. Um, one of the things to be aware of with this is that they have three different levels. Um, and each one, uh, one through three and the higher the number goes, the higher the weight goes, but also the more it will dig into the dirt, the higher the number goes. So, um, if you're in rocky terrain, you want to get the deuce number three and <laughs> I just had to say good day. <laughs> <laughs> Jester oh, and I had this conversation on trail one day about it. I'm not even going to go a there bidet. with a bidet. I cannot. Skunk knows why I can't. I can't do it. No. <laughs> but I will say in all seriousness, you know, Wheezy P went over her trowel. There is another option. It is called a bidet. You can look it up. I'm never using it. I don't. Neither am I. I'm an advocate. <laughs> I'm an advocate of um, carry out your own toilet paper. 
So I am a proponent of toilet paper. I love toilet paper, but I will also carry out my own toilet paper in a Ziploc bag. The nice soft kind, of course. The nice soft kind, (laughs) of course, yes. So I am a proponent of carry out your toilet paper, especially on a day hike. There's no reason to bury your toilet paper on a day hike. I'm sure I'm going to get all kinds of flack for that, but hey, whatever. So (laughs) that's why too, for women, the Kula cloth is so good because then- it's reusable and you just hang it off your pack and it, the sun hits it and dries it out. And then you don't have to worry about carrying out your PP toilet paper. There you go. And it has micro antibacterial agents built in mm-hmm. the cloth. There's this whole thing about it on their website. So please, please, please go take a look at that. Tons of designs. <laughs> and now we'll move over to food. <laughs> I think one of the things that I wanted to bring up with food is not really get into, um, you know, styles of food and types of food and who does what and make your own food, but more into uh, maybe a list of when I say this, I'll get into this, like how much food and what you need to think about when you resupply. So before we get into that, Got to talk about hydration and water filtration. I am a proponent of, you know, filtering your water 100%. I've also been known to drink some very, very good mountain water that I did not have to filter, but you got to be very, very careful in those situations. Absolutely. I filter 100% of the time. And right now I'm using the Be Free uh, water filter system. Um, And I know Wheezy P, you are using, which one are you using now? The Be Free. The be free. Okay. Did you mm-hmm. use the, um, the Sawyer? Did you ever use the Sawyer? Yeah. When we first started, we used the Sawyer. Um, but when the be free came out, we just started using that. One of the things I like to consider with everything, as you know, is weight, but with, um, like I talked about stoves last week and talked about the uh, boil time, you want to look to when you pick out, cause you're going to use whatever filter works best for you. Um, look at the flow rate. Um, because we've been in situations where I've got my be free and I'm filling up the bottle and then the person next to me has their Sawyer and it's taking them like three times as long. And they're like, Hey, can I borrow that? <laughs> Cause they want to get on their way. Um, so think about what you want to do. Like, how long do you want to be sitting there, um, filtering water for, cause there's gravity filters and all sorts of filters out there. Um, the, the one negative to the be free is that you do have to replace the filter more often than you have to with replacing your Sawyer. That is true. And I think the replacement for the Be Free is right around $25. So right. just be um, you know, cognizant of that um, when you are looking at water filters. But the main thing is, is I wanted to say, yes, I am a proponent of filtering your water. And Alpha Gal says uh, he prefers the Be Free and he's used both, but typically he uses Aquamira. That is another option, 100%. And then uh, Skunk Ape put down here the best water filter purification system that he has used is Rapid Pure. And I am not familiar with that. So I will have to look that not up. Either. So Rapid Pure. Thank you, Skunk. We will look that up. Um, another thing I wanted to add is a lot of people um, use water bladders or water bottles. And I'm here to tell you, I was a proponent of, I will never not use a water bladder. I used a water bladder all the way up until this past fall. And now I am so used to the bottles. um, I I just can't even imagine going back to the water bladder. So I have converted. Wheezy P's laughing at me because I was like, oh, I'll never convert. I love my bladder. We had this conversation this summer. Yes. (laughs) So I have converted. I also wanted to talk about the importance of electrolytes. Um, And I have found myself in situations where I did not have electrolytes with me. And this is, I like Noon. Um, It's spelled capital N-U-U-N. It's a tablet. It's very easy to drop in your water. A lot of people utilize Gatorade, Powerade, sports powders, Um, I almost consider this um, part of an emergency tool to have in my food bag as well. Always, always, always have electrolytes because you never know what your body's going to do. And you also don't know, especially if you're hiking with somebody, what their body's going to do in a situation where somebody might get dehydrated and you have to help out. So that's why I wanted to put electrolytes on there. Always, always, always have those with you. And then um, I wanted to talk about food for day hikes and then food for overnight hikes. 
And I'm going to go over the overnight hikes, or if you are going over a long section and then come back to food for a day hike. And what I mean by this is, this is kind of my rule of thumb that I go by. So if I'm going for a full day, an overnight, and then another full day or a week, or maybe like a three-day carry for the day. So one day's worth of food would be some type of breakfast, a snack, a lunch, a mid-afternoon snack, a dinner, and another snack. So, and I have a very hard time getting all of that to add up to 2,000 to 2,500 calories. So when I am, that is my regimen when I start, because the food is the hardest thing for me. And I'm not sure about Wheezy P, but food, I I just, I never want to deal with it. So I always, when I'm getting ready to go overnight, I make sure for the day I have breakfast, a snack, a lunch, another snack, a dinner, and another snack after dinner. Because if you eat dinner at four or five o'clock, believe me, by seven, you're going to be sitting in your tent and you're going to be hungry. So I just wanted to put that out there. It's a real easy thing to go by. And then you kind of learn what you like for breakfast, what you want for snacks. What do you want to do for lunch? What do you want to do for dinner? Once you get a regimen down of what you need. So I'll turn it over to you, Wheezy P. Um, Now, if you listened to us last summer, Wheezy P and I did some section hiking on the Appalachian Trail. And I don't think our day hike meals were very good because we ate a lot of pizza, a lot of donuts. So go. (laughs) So Wheezy P, talk about um, your food for just a typical day hike. All right. I want to build off that uh, electrolytes uh, conversation that you were having. So um, a couple of things that you can think about, too, with that is goo gels, which a lot of runners use because those replace your electrolytes and your sodium and potassium. Um, also bolt chews or Gatorade chews, cause you can't always get like the Gatorade packets. So those are really good. And then there's the strop waffles. I'm probably pronouncing that wrong. Um, I actually ran into somebody on trail. Um, I had met them the day before the, it was a father and daughter and the father was an elderly gentleman and he ended up getting really dehydrated and I found him on the ground. And I gave him some goo gels and some bolt chews and, and he was feeling much, much better after that. I got a text later that he made it. So that's really important to, to carry. What I do for food is I don't have a breakfast and lunch. I do have a dinner set aside, um, but I just eat whatever I crave at the time. So for a long time, what I was doing, and I did this my last couple of days in Georgia, I'm guilty of that, is I used to eat what I call like a five-year-old who got loose in a grocery store with somebody's credit card, like pop tarts and Snickers and mint Oreos and just food like that. But after a while, I began to learn that what we are doing, that hiking all day on a day hike or hiking for days on end, we're engaged in an endurance sport. This is, so we need to feed ourselves like we're endurance athletes. So what I like to do is have higher protein uh, foods like pro bar bites and this is not a higher protein food, but it is really good. Rice crispy treats <laughs> for some sugar um, and green belly bars are great. They're a meal replacement bar. I don't use them like that. I use them to just kind of snack on during the day. Cheetos, cause they're salty. They, they're really good. They're really light to carry. Um, so that's how I like to eat. And then what I do is like Jester was saying, the dinner with a snack. So I usually do a Trailtopia meal. And then I follow that up with a package of Pop-Tarts before I go to bed. So, because I like, I like dessert. So I like to have that dessert. I'm also hypoglycemic. That's something that you want to think about too. Maybe go to the doctors, get a workup, see if you have any blood sugar issues. Um, because since I tend to run low with my blood sugar, my body will start craving sugar. And Jester was with me when I made that little convenience store run for sugar. (laughs) (laughs) And my last two days in Georgia, that is literally all I ate was sugar because that's what my body wanted. So make sure to, um, that, like I said, talk to your doctor, get some blood work done just so you're healthy out there and find out what you need. Um, because you don't want to end up getting sick out there. Um, I also with eating, I try to eat every two to three hours. Um, because that kind of keeps your sustained energy for a longer period of time. And you might not want to stop and have a big, um, big meal or, or anything. So I like to keep a lot of snack type stuff in my bag. Um, so that I can just eat it quick and then get, get moving again. 
And we do have some comments in the chat that I want to make sure people hear. So Skunk Ape says his main for his main meals, he makes sure that he has 100 calories per ounce of weight carried. So 100 calories per ounce of weight carried. Kendra says that she loves the bolt chews. And I will say last summer, Wheezy P saved me a couple of times with those bolt chews because I just couldn't, for some reason last summer, I just couldn't eat. I don't know what it was. Um, Lisa says the liquid IV um, is good also to add to your water. I've never heard of that. So I'll have to look that up. And uh, Stella says, uh, yes, brown sugar and cinnamon pop tarts, please. So there you yes. go. <laughs> I've got um, some in the cabinet. <laughs> <laughs> so now that we we've kind of given you um, some ideas about food, we need to talk about food storage. Um, there's basically three ways to store your food. And then the lesson plan, I put what I found was the best description of this is Andrew Skirtka's buyer's guide to either a bear bag, a bear canister, or an ursac. So no matter what, I am not a proponent of sleeping with your food. I don't want any animals in my tent, let alone a bear, which is snakes, mice. I don't want anybody in there with me. Um, so I am a proponent of hanging food. I have only hung food. Um, I have used a bear canister in particular situations, depending on forest areas and rules and regulations. And we talked about that before. And I know, Wheezy P, you have used an ursac. So you want to speak to that real quick? Sure. I absolutely love my ursac almighty. Um, when I started going solo, I have problems with my shoulder. I just have so many problems. So I can't throw a, a line for a bear bag. Um, so it was carry the heavy bear canister or do the ursac. So um, when you are looking at the ursac, just be aware that there's a couple different ones. There's ones that are critter proof. There's ones that are bear proof. And then the almighty is critter and bear proof. I have used it with I'll say quote unquote odor proof bags, because my feeling is that nothing is truly odor proof to a bear, but odor reducing. And I have not had any problems whatsoever. Absolutely love it. It's not that heavy for that kind of protection. And you just, you tie it off to a tree, you, you knot it and, and you're good for the night. It's really a very convenient way to store your food. And yeah, please don't sleep with your food because no. I know a lot of people do and it, it, it works out okay, but one of the problems that in the long run, the bears can get used to is that equating the smell of food with the tent. And you might not have a problem with the bear, but a few times later, someone else may have a problem with the bear trying to come into their tent for food. So just be aware that when you're there in your tent spot, just take the extra time to go hang it. If you don't want to hang or you can't hang physically, get a bear canister or get an ursac and keep yourself and everyone else safe. And I know, I'll just say on the East Coast, I know it's, you know, you're more bear bag hanging. And, but on the West Coast, I mean, it is almost 100%, you know, like bear canisters. I mean, you cannot sleep with your food on the West Coast. And um, I know for Mount Rainier National Park and hiking the Wonderland Trail, you can only camp in designated camp areas and you have to put your food either in the bear boxes or they have bear hanging poles. So again, I go back to please look at the rules and regulations for where you are going and we do not recommend sleeping with your food at no. all. So, <laughs> and in fact, no. I've been in shelters where I have seen people get mad at other people for hanging their food in their shelter, in the shelter and, and things like that, because it's mice and other animals. So you got to think beyond the bear. That's what I'm going to say. Um, before we move on to Wheezy P's favorite part of all four of these episodes, which are electronics, I do want to mention, I failed last week to mention one of my most favorite things is my spoon. So I wanted to let you guys know, <laughs> and Wheezy P is laughing, I found the best spoon ever, and everybody's probably already using it. I'm probably the last one to the party. It is a Tokes long handle, and the thing about this spoon is it has a smooth bowl, so when you take a bite of something, it's not that grainy end um, that you typically get in a spoon. And it's long enough when you get into those backpacker meals 
your hand's not getting, you know, half the food on it when you're dipping it down in the bag or if you're using a larger Ziploc bag. So I wanted to mention that spoon. I also wanted to mention um, a hiker's best friend are Ziploc bags. So please, please, please carry extra Ziploc bags with you, not only for your toilet paper, but for your trash. And we're going to get more into that next week. Uh, we do have a couple comments before we move on. Lisa says, when you have your food and then your dog's food in the bag, she couldn't hang it because it was too heavy. The earth sack was great. So there you go. Another proponent for the earth sack. And Alpha Gal says, yes, got to have the smooth bowl. And I will say 100%, bring your Ziplocs. Do not burn your trash. And we're going to get way more into that next week because I know Wheezy P and I both are very strong components of leave no trace and Wheezy P yes. even trains her dogs leave no trace, but yes. we're going to get more into that next week and we're going to move on da, 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 to Wheezy P's favorite part. <laughs> she's got, ladies and gentlemen, she's got her notes ready. We are going to talk about electronics and um, I, I might as well go ahead and mention my little part here. Um, everybody brings electronics, but I did want to talk about the headlamp real quick um, because I find a headlamp vitally important. And I'm almost to the point where I'm, I'm cringing because I don't want to say this out loud. I would almost carry two headlamps, um, one battery, one rechargeable, because I have that fear. But in a headlamp, what I have found is that you want to have the white light you want to have the red light for getting out of your, your tent at night, reading in the tent at night, and you also want to have the flashing component to it in case of emergency. And I use an Energizer headlamp. I also just recently bought a rechargeable headlamp. And I have to say, I like my $15.99 Energizer headlamp better than I do um, the $39 rechargeable headlamp that I bought. And we talked about this before, and we're going to talk about it again next week. Part of what I consider my electronics is my spot device. I know Wheezy P has an inReach. So mm -hmm. my part was the headlamp and the spot or some type of uh, unit where you can get a call out, an SOS call. And we're going to go into more of that next week. So Wheezy P, I turn it over to you for your electronics. Well, I'll tell you that inReach is well worth the wait. I, I wouldn't even think about going well, if I get that in reach, it's going to add eight ounces to my pack. No, because that in reach or that spot could save your life. So I, I think it's really, really important. I don't go anywhere without it, not even to the local nature preserve or walking in town. Um, so, okay, so here goes my electronics. <laughs> so <laughs> I have, um, I carry a lot of electronics. That's my luxury item. Like everybody's got to have their one luxury item. And that's mine. So I carry two phones. One is on Verizon. One is on AT and T. Um, which and is that really is not helpful. uncommon. I do make fun, but that is not uncommon. It's really helpful because I've run into situations where I'm just having a really bad day. And I can't get service on one phone, and then I get that little spot of service on another phone, and I'm able to call home and get that pep talk that I need to keep on keep on going. Um, and one, I keep on airplane mode and really, I try to keep both of them on airplane mode, but I tend to keep my AT&T phone on airplane mode and I use it as a camera it, cause it's the Samsung ultra S 20, um, which has an amazing camera. So I use that primarily as a camera and on my iPhone, I'll do like little videos for the videos that I put together. And also as part of my electronics, I also have the inReach. And I use a Garmin Instinct watch um, to track all my elevation and all my. Oh stats Lord, I forgot. People, I forgot about the watch. Yes, the watch. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so my electronic sack includes all that. So I have to keep that all charged. So I have the Anchor battery packs. Um, one of the things is how much battery pack do you need? And the way that I do it is I look at realistically how much battery am I going to need to use during the day? How many days am I going to be out? So the easiest way to do that is use Google, look up the, it's the MAH, I think that stands for megahertz <laughs> of your battery of your phone or any of your devices that you're going to have. And then multiply that by the number of days. Maybe you're not going to like kill your phone all the way to zero one day. So maybe you know that you're going to have to charge your phone every other day. 
So you'll have to charge your phone twice. You just, you just do your own calculations and then you can figure out what battery pack. Now, as Jester has mentioned, uh, milliamp. Thank you, Skunk Ape. <laughs> yeah, M A H is milliamp hours. Thank you, Skunk Ape. Thank I have you. I, okay. This is way out of my element. I have no idea. And by the I way, I just know it's M A H. That's all I do. So thank Alpha you. Gal says uh, dual carriers. That's nerdy. Mm -hmm. So there you go. <laughs> so, um, oh, I lost my train. <laughs> oh, your battery pack. So my battery pack. So I can Jester has picked on me for this, but I like to carry an extra battery pack. Um, I probably carry much more than I need, but um, I personally, and this is my luxury, when I go into my tent at night, I like to relax and feel like I'm at home. So I will actually watch like 20 to 30 minutes of a movie or maybe a TV show that's downloaded to my phone. So I know that's going to kill a little bit more battery. I never go through all the battery that um, I bring with me, but it, I've also been able to perform some kind of trail magic for other hikers because I've ran into hikers at shelters where their phone is, you know, and 10% and they're not going to get to town for another two days. And I'm like, Hey, you want to charge your phone up a little bit? So I don't mind carrying the extra weight. And um, I also watched an episode of, I think it was like Alaska state troopers. And there was a snowmobiler who was stuck out there. And the only way they were able to find this guy was because he had a cell phone and it was charged and it was pinging off a tower. So they were able to find him. And that kind of prompted me to carry those two battery packs too. So I'm all about my, my thing, like Jester's is her headlamps. Mine is being stuck out there and not being able to reach out for help if injured um, and not being able to be found. So that's why I have the in reach and the multiple phones and the multiple battery packs to keep me all nice and charged up. But like we always say, it's all up to you. It's your hike whatever makes you feel comfortable. And I will say too, I mean, when you're speaking of electronics, I actually had on the list here, a phone, a camera. So I would say your second phone is, is really your camera. It is, um, you know, battery bricks. There's all kinds of battery bricks that like Wheezy P was talking about, you know, and now we know what MAH is the milliamp hours. I'm looking at mine right now. Mine has 10,000 something 10,000 amps and I think it charges my iPhone it says it will charge it three times but here's the the other thing to look at that I've learned um, the hard way with the battery bricks is how long does it actually take to charge that battery brick and sometimes it can take three four five hours so that is another mm -hmm. thing that you kind of want to look at um, if you're going to be out on a long section hike and you have maybe four or five days in between town stops or longer, how many battery bricks that you want to bring with you. And these days, I don't think it's uncommon to have uh, two battery bricks, you know, that are 20,000, you know, milliamps because people are YouTubing, podcasting, you know, mm -hmm. making videos from the trail. And, you know, you did make a comment. A while back, I actually think it was when you were originally on the podcast that you like to listen to, you know, a familiar voice if you're out by yourself at night. Mm -hmm. And that kind of helps soothe, soothe you into being, you know, less scared or whatever by yourself on the trail. So another thing to um, think about. So and Lisa says that she brings her Kindle. That's the other thing I forgot mm -hmm. about because I don't. A lot of people bring their Kindles, their iPads. Um, and Stella says, don't ever be afraid to ask a trail angel for a phone charge. And you know what? I never thought about that until you said that. And it just reminded me that fresh ground, I saw him last year out on the Appalachian trail. He specifically put on the outside of his van, these amped up supercharged USB ports. So if hikers didn't want to eat, they could at least charge their phones when they came through the area. Um, and that has become a huge thing, you know, that we didn't think about 10 or 15 years ago. So Wheezy P, we have completed episode number three, your clothes, your food, your electronics. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you again for joining me, Wheezy P and everybody else in the chat. This has been awesome. And we'll be back for part four next week. Bye, everybody.